characters. Then the computer vision, just like you have eyes, you can see. So also the computer has been simulated to have eyes and to see. The computer vision is all about ability of a machine to see an image and to recognize that image. And this is done when you have fed the machine with a lot of data. For example, you want a machine to be able to recognize a dog. You must have fed that machine with millions of images of dogs. So immediately the machine sees a dog, it knows that this is a dog. That's one of the, the, the basis for which we have artificial intelligence. Then the cognitive computing is also another way of making the machine to work for you and I. That is at least of the machine to think like the way you are thinking. You can think. The machine will look at the data that you have, look at the patent using the neural network um, uh, processing and then being able to think and be able to give you interpretation and be able to give you information. Now, there are three types of artificial intelligence. We have the artificial narrow intelligence that scientists generally call weak intelligence. We have the general intelligence and the super intelligence that they call strong and super strong intelligence. As of today all over the world, what we have is, the, is still the narrow intelligence. Why is it narrow or weak? It is because it can only perform one function at a time. It cannot mimic the entire human body system. Like the robots that we have around us, the virtual assistant we have around us, the chatbots we have around us, they are all forms, even the chat GPT, they are all forms of narrow artificial intelligence because it can only perform one function at a time. But the general and the super intelligence, the general one is that it's a, it's a tool that will be able to do to have the intelligence that a human being can have. We're able to do what you can do. Why the super uh, or the, the super intelligence it will be made to have super intelligence more than human being. But these two types, these two general intelligence types, they, no, they are still in the theory. That is the vision of the scientists. Let's be hopeful that in the next 10 years, we start to have human beings that, I mean, machines that can do what you can do as a human being. Um, Artificial intelligence has been used, or is currently being used in so many fields. Uh, now we are talking about uh, cars that can drive themselves. They, those ones are products of artificial intelligence. It can be used in manufacturing. It has, it's currently being used in manufacturing system. It's currently being used in gaming system. Those of you that watch football games or uh, war games, they are all products of artificial intelligence. Governments also use artificial intelligence tools to collect data from their citizens. In healthcare, we shall go there. In finance, you can use Many banks now use artificial intelligence to detect fraud, to, to, to interact with their uh, customers. In education, of course, our simulation laboratory, artificial intelligence is being used now to examine students, to grade their scripts with teachers, just you know, being able to focus on some other things. And in businesses, like uh, all those uh, online businesses, they are all products of artificial intelligence. Uh, you can see all of this we are familiar with. Your Facebook uh, friend's recommendation. Ha hasn't it occurred to you sometimes that how does Facebook realize that this person, I'm likely to know him? When you go to Facebook, you say, these are suggestions for you. And you realize that those people are people you know. And you tend to imagine, how did Facebook know? It's the products of artificial intelligence. The, uh, the, the Siri, if, if, you, if you have someone here, you have iPhone, I'm sure you might have Siri, virtual assistant on your iPhone that will help you to, to plan your time, to give you weather, to give you so many information. Or you have your Amazon Alexa with you. If you, if you are using Microsoft 365, you are likely going to have a Cortana as a virtual assistant there that will help you to plan your time, that will give you information, that will set reminders for you and so many other things that you could have done yourself. The self-driving cars, the conversational words like ChatGPT, the automated financial investing, the virtual travel booking agents, the email spam filters. For those of you that use Gmail, you realize that Gmail will separate all your mails. One to primary, one to uh, social, one to promotion. How did Gmail know that this one is not for primary? This is all products of artificial intelligence. Now, let's now move down to um, 
AI used in healthcare system. AI is being used all over the world in our healthcare delivery system. Uh, in the school, artificial intelligence is used in our laboratory. Now we have simulation laboratories. You can perform surgery in the laboratory before you go to the hospital. You, you, can, you can work on uh, mannequin. You can simulate a mannequin to die, to cry, to bleed in the laboratory as if it's a human being that is bleeding or crying. These are all products of artificial intelligence. Artificial intelligence has been used in drug discovery because when you feed the computer or a machine with a lot of data, it's able to come up with drug molecules that will be easier for the, the drug production company to make use of and fast track the production of drugs in, 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 within a short period of time. The medical chatbots, there's going to be a video we're going to watch. Where we have medical chatbots now that can be in your house that will interact with you as if you are talking to a healthcare professional that will collect your data and this also help us in telling medicine or in telling nursing in, uh, in our healthcare system. The medical imaging, now we're talking about MRI, MRI that you go and do your um, investigation now. A, a computer will print out the images for you, we, we, we interpret it for you, print it out for you. Unlike in the past that the radiologists Maybe the X-ray, the X-ray film will just come and the geology will still have to view it, interpret it, and the last one. Now we have machines that can do all of that for us. These are all products of artificial intelligence. Medical research, of course, when you have a lot of data. That's why today everybody is talking about data, 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 data. In our healthcare system, data is very important. You collect data from your patient, and it's important for you to keep records, good records of the data. So you can use that data for your medical research. In patient care, it's being used in disease diagnosis, and in also in personalized treatment plans, you can use artificial intelligence. Now that we have artificial intelligence, in our healthcare delivery system, there are so many benefits that have been listed, you know, associated with it. When you have artificial intelligence to doing some of the things that are not of, let's say, core professional actions, then your work is relieved. Your work is relieved. And when your work is relieved, of course, you will be more efficient because you will focus more on the most important parts of the healthcare delivery system. It has been noted that there is high quality of patients' lives when artificial intelligence tools are used in our healthcare system. There are streamlined workflows. I, I remember when I went to, um, to the U.S. and the... Uh, I had to visit an hospital. I just felt like, let me do this investigation here rather than doing it in Nigeria. And I just went to the hospital website and I uh, interacted. I, before I knew it, information kept on coming to me. What do you want to do? You need to go to this place. Uh, 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 but if I have to be in Nigeria, you have to visit the hospital. Somebody will direct you to the clinic. Somebody will direct you to pharmacy. Don't want to do and you'll be moving around, which is not so. So artificial intelligence actually helps in streamlining you know, the workflows in our healthcare delivery system. There's high accuracy of treatment. When you bring in quality data into the machine, the machine give, gives you quality information. The uh, medical error is reduced at the end of the day. And there's also reduced cost because when you make use of artificial intelligence tools, most of the time the patients are in their homes and they interact with the healthcare professionals through these tools. And so you, have, you don't have to pay for admission, hospital admission, you don't have to pay for light in the hospital, you don't have to pay for so many things and that actually reduces cost. And there's higher employment engagements, there's reduced workload and there's also decreased labor demand. Now, AI in nursing practice. AI, this is, our, this is our focus today because we are talking about AI use for decision making in nursing practice. It has been documented that AI helps us to it support our decision. You know, when you have a lot of data about your patient, what you just need to do is to go to where the data is. And with that, you'll be able to make a decision. When you have understanding of the data that you have, a patient that have high, high glucose level, at the same time high blood pressure, or prior adventure is a patient, uh, is an oncology patient, you, that information, your access to the data will be able to help you to plan the care 
for that particular patient. It's, and when you have access to all those data, or when you have artificial intelligence to supporting your work, your, you, your patient care is what is enhanced. There is, you fast track your patient care. There is nothing like I've been waiting for two hours, three hours, nobody is attending to me. Uh, yeah, artificial intelligence has also, you know, been noted to help us in decision making. We will see this in the next slide. And our education also in our laboratory. I don't know whether you have simulation laboratory here. If you don't have, uh, I think uh, maybe the fashion seller will be thinking about that. That is the world we are in now. D the students don't have to get to the hospital before we they see a live patient. You can see a live doll in the laboratory. A doll that can bleed, a doll that can cry, a doll that can walk around like a patient and that helps you to have better grips of you know, nursing care before you actually go outside there to deal with live patients. And uh, it has also helped us to do some data analysis and uh, AI also helped nursing to get real-time data because as the data is coming from the patient, it's getting into your health electronic records and you are able to have access to the data and to be able to personalize you know, the care you want to give to that patient. Uh, now, I want us to watch this video. Our app can be a part of their lives every day. So our avatar, Molly, she can check in with the patient every single morning, more than once a day if that's needed. She can ask the patients how they're doing. She can collect really important information, such as their weight or their blood pressure, glucose levels, ask them relevant questions to whatever condition they might have. And all this information can be funneled back to the clinician seamlessly, so the clinician can just be alerted to which patients are actually possibly having an issue that day. Your weight is 190.9 pounds. You did not gain any weight. That's good. Now let's take your blood pressure. Please make sure the cuff is on by pressing the orange button on the side because of the cuff. Because we have this avatar that talks to you and you can talk back to, it makes people way more engaged because patients have told me it's, it's comforting to have her. It's like someone's holding my hand and they would rather talk to her than just use an app on their phone. And because of that engagement level, they're more likely to do these types of things to keep themselves healthier. Your pressure is 149 over 94. Your pulse is 81 beats per minute. Your blood pressure is a bit high today. We will keep monitoring that. Now that we are done taking your vitals, I want to ask you more about how you are feeling. If you are experiencing shortness of breath, is it worse than normal? Anything else you want to tell me? No. Because of your results this morning, you need to check in with the nurse to see if there are any adjustments you need to make to your clinical routine. It's outside of regular office hours, but I can still connect you with someone. Would you like me to do so? All right. A nurse will give you a call back on the next business day to see how you are doing. Thanks for your time and I will talk to you tomorrow. Goodbye. That's, that's artificial intelligence in your home. You don't need a doctor or a nurse to come around. That's a nurse, a chatbot that is prepared for that purpose, is in the house of that man, collects data, collects the BP, collects every other information. And you know it was asking the man, do you want me to refer you because your BP is high today? And he said, no. He said, okay, I will check on you in the next business day. That is artificial intelligence. So you as a nurse, you, you just have to be there. That data is, that is collected is going to a central place where a nurse can have access to it and the treatment continues from there. Now we look at this one again. Hello everyone, let me introduce you to Florence, our robotic nurse assistant. Florence is a result of collaboration of Alexandra Hospital and NCS Healthcare Innovation to automate tasks such as items delivery, vital signs measurement and synchronization of patients' records. This will free healthcare practitioners from performing time-consuming tasks so that they can focus more on patient engagement and patient care. Here is Florence to assist me in my daily tasks. Florence would perform the highly repetitive tasks that do not require my nursing skills. I have just programmed Florence to check and record vital signs of all the patients in the ward. I would also like Florence to do another repetitive tasks of snacks delivery. 
So here I am loading it with the snacks to be delivered to the patient. Visitors, please move away from the bedside. I will be approaching you. Hi, my name is Florence. I am here to take your vital sign measurement. Kindly look at the camera. Please scan your wrist tag now. From 0 to 10, please tell me your pain score. Please keep still and breathe normally. The measurement will take up to one minute. Please insert your finger and relax. Measurement has completed. Please remove your finger. All measurement completed. The vitals of the patients recorded are then automatically synced with the patient's records for future use. This automation procedure saves up to 17% of nurses' time. In case the vital signs are worrying, the nurses would be notified. Hope you like my service. I will make a move now. My name is Florence. I am here to deliver the requested item. With Florence as my assistant, I am able to focus on providing quality care for my patients. So that is Florence, my nurse assistant. Imagine you have two Florence in Bowen Teaching Hospital. The work of the nurse, the workload will be reduced because Florence will go around all the patients to take the vital signs. And the vital signs go straight to the electronic health record. And there's a trigger to the nurse that, look, this particular patient, this signs is, is high or there is a danger. So the, this, the, this is work of artificial intelligence. Now you now have a machine to be able to do. You know, if you remember what the guide is saying, the nurse, the professional nurse is saying, she said, Florence will do the work that does not require what? Professional task. So it's like an assistant. And this is the era we are in now. I, I just hope that someday we will not have a Florence that will be able to do what a real nurse can do. But I guess that is where the scientists are going to. Now let's watch the last video. Walking down the hall at Cedar Sinai, you may meet Moxie and its twin, Moxie, Cedar Sinai's brand new robots. The robots are here to help the nursing staff with simple yet time consuming tasks. Moxie delivers items from central issues, either that are too heavy or just don't fit in a normal system. So like IV pumps, uh, sani, sani wipes, which are cleaning wipes, chair alarms, uh, cushions for patients. She uh, can go to the gift shop and pick up items that a patient may have purchased. For nurses, requesting Moxie is as easy as making a phone call or sending a text. You basically search Moxie and her name pops up. Moxie comes up and you just text what you need. Once Moxie receives the request, the robot responds within five minutes with a status update and an estimated time of arrival. We're tracking uh, the times that it, the turnaround times that Moxie takes to do a task, which is currently running less than 30 minutes, which is, is great. Moxie is the product of Diligent Robotics and brought to Cedar Sinai as a pilot program. Marshall says the staff loves it. They're thrilled that Moxie shortens the time of delivery for things that they're waiting on, like infusion pumps. There's this, this sense of um, thrill that they're getting things quicker than they would um, before Moxie. But Moxie is more than just a robot delivery system. Both robots have personality and people can engage with them. Hi, Moxie. Hi, Moxie. Moxie's eyes smile with hearts and the robotic arm waves hello. 
think that's one of the big positive benefits from Moxie is the staff get a little energy out of uh, being around the robot, even our patients and families. I just the other day saw a picture of a child um, in the hospital playing peekaboo with Moxie. It has positive benefits that you, I wouldn't anticipate. I think it's important to have Moxie be present at Cedars. I think it not only provides an opportunity to improve workflows and be more efficient, but I think it's a fun uh, thing to see around the halls. It feels very future forward. It's that little connection, even though it's a robot, you still have that, you're my friend, you're my helper, let's work together. Thank you, that is Maxie for us. So, um, you, you can imagine when you have this machine doing little, little tasks, going to the store, bringing this for nurses, the nursing job is, is, is less the stress. The work is stress is reduced. And now a nurse will be able to focus more on real patient care on the world. Now, we look at um, AI now for clinical nursing decision making, which is the real topic or the real, the real focus of today. A nursing job involves collecting data, determining nursing diagnosis, making nursing plans, executing nursing interventions, and evaluating intervention. You can see that there are five things that a nurse does to a patient. First and foremost, before you can care for your patient, you must collect data from that patient. Who is that patient? What are the signs? What are the issues? And after, when you do that, the next thing is you now come up with your own nursing diagnosis. Is it that this person has deficient fluid intake? Or is there any cardiac issues and things like that? You come up with your nursing diagnosis. You now make your plans. What do I intend to do? Am I supposed to change the position of this patient? Am I supposed to refer this patient? Am I supposed to move this person, to mobilize this person, to move this person out of bed? So you, 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 you now make your plans and then you execute the plan and at the end of the day you evaluate your plans. These are the things that nurses do on the world. And imagine when you have a 30-bedded world with two nurses, which means that a nurse will care for 15 patients. And for each patient, you must do these five things. You can see how laborious the work is. And that is the essence of having these machines to help our task. Having this AI to help our task. So if AI is able to collect data on our behalf, the work is easier because the data the AI will collect will be quality data. There's minimal error in the data the AI we collect. And that will help the nurse to be able to come up with correct diagnosis and to be able to manage that patient. But however, the most difficult part of this entire process is making decision for a nursing diagnosis. Making that decision is the most difficult part. When you have a, patient, a nurse that has so many patients to care for, you can imagine how difficult it is to make a decision because that, that nurse is stressed up, that nurse has a lot of work, it's not even composed because because you have to attend, especially when you have emergency. So it's difficult to make uh, such a decision. Nurses need to arrive at an effective clinical decision through extensive sources of knowledge and reliable information in a supportive environment. But there are challenges. In making decisions, there are challenges. No wonder we hear sometimes, oh, this nurse has done this one. Is this nurse that killed this person? Is this nurse that did this? Why? Because there are so many challenges around us. Number one is the staff shortage. Now we talk about JAPA. In our hospitals now, we have very few nurses. And there are even no, there are even no nurses to employ. Now, federal government is saying retired nurses come back and work. That is the level in which we find ourselves. Because even these young ones cannot afford to stay in Nigeria. I'm sure you parents too. You will be planning how your children will move out to Canada or move out to USA now. That is the next agenda. But one thing we need to realize that in Nigeria, we need these young nurses. The shortage of nurses actually affected nursing decision. I, I have a friend who works in one of the teaching hospitals. She told me, I, I, she, sometimes I saw her and said, you didn't come for this program. Say, so, yeah, I was on night duty. And the following week, I was on night duty. Say, why? Night duty for two consecutive weeks. Say, yeah, there's no staff. There's no staff. I said, how are you coping? For two weeks, night duty, just two days off in between weeks. And she said, don't worry, me too. I'll soon jack back so that I will not die here. And that is it. When the work is getting too much, they feel that I left. They also want to leave because the work is telling on their health. So there is shortened recording procedure. 
nurses collect data. And because there's a shortage of staff, there is so much uh, patient to attend to. Even your documentation process, the period is short. You cannot even document everything that you have done to your patient. And that reduces the quality of data that you have in your bank. There's poor record keeping in our system. Sometimes ago, one of the nurses told me and said, look, even nursing report in the medical record, the, the way they treat it, that uh, it's as if it's nothing to write, it's nothing to, to, to reckon with, which I think is not right. Because now in the era of artificial intelligence, if today we want to have robots in Nigeria, we need the data from the client case file. We need the data from this patient to be able to input into the machine and the machine will be able to help us to come up with proper diagnosis and to come up with proper recommendations when we are trying to personalize the care of our patient. And of course, the unfavorable work environment. How does it feel if you get to the world today you want to work? You open the tap, there's no water. How does it feel you get to the theater? One of my students, PhD students, was telling me that there was a time they had a patient in the theater. And while the patient was already in, the patient has been intubated, was already on anesthesia, is for reservation. When the patient is in the theater, so the work environment is also not conducive for nurses to work. How will a nurse make a decision? And that is the reason why we need this artificial intelligence to come to the aid of nurses so that they can be able to give quality care. Now, AI tool for nursing decision making. When you make use of AI, there's quick and appropriate suggestions for various clinical symptoms and exceptional testing results. According to Sibet Ito 2021, there was a systematic review that was done to be able to assess how, a, or how nurses make use of AI in their work. And some of the things that they, they were, they, they assessed 292 publications. And some of their findings were that they use AI for image and signal processing with tracking. That is, AI can help to capture images, can send signals to nurses, just like what we saw in the case of uh, Flores. And also helps in classifying uh, our, uh, the activity that needs to be done on the world. It helps to coordinate the care, and also it assists in communicating with the patient. And AI too also helps in detecting fall. When the patient is at risk of fall, or somebody a patient has fallen, you know, on the ward or in the bedroom or somewhere, AI too will be able to signal the nurse to come to the aid of that uh, patient. AI accurately identifies at risk patients from health electronic records and other sources and sensor-based technologies. Now today we have many people now, we have few people wearing gadgets, I, 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 I either, um, you know, uh, all these artificial gadgets in the body, and wherever you go, the gadgets send signals to, you know, to the healthcare professionals through the health electronic uh, record. And so the sensor-based technologies can assist nurses to compose text and send multimedia messages to measure body movement, to collect vital signs, and to also collect environmental data, just like what we see concerning the Sensely. If you type sensely.com, if you go to Google or you type sensely.com, you will see, you, you go there yourself, you will see this video, and you will also be able to make use of this virtual assistant to screen you, to screen your health condition. And we, I, I did that when I was preparing for this lecture. Now, what are the challenges of AI in nursing practice? It's, for now, it's been affirmed that even some traditional tools, they perform similarly like AI tools, or some even have performed. For example, the Glasgow Comma Scale. You can say that that performs better than AI too. Then the data quality and sources have shown mixed results. Robotic resistance, there, is, there, is, there, there, there has been cultural concern, you know, uh, some patients feeling that how can a robot, a robot come to my bedside and start taking my vital signs? How can I be talking to a robot? I want to see a nurse myself. Let a human being come to me. And that has been the challenge in the use of robotic nurse assistance. Then there's also concern for job loss. There's concern that very soon nurses will lose their job. Well, I don't, I don't want to, I don't know, I don't want to comment on that. One thing I know is that the robotic uh, assistant is to assist the nurse. So it's the nurse assistant that will lose the job. But if scientists now ended up producing nurse, real nurse themselves, the nurse are bound to lose their job. There's also concern about confidentiality and privacy. When the assistant goes around to collect vital signs or other information from patient, it goes to the pool of data. And so anybody have access to it. So there's concern for 
privacy and um, confidentiality. Now, when I was preparing for this lecture, I was just like, what are nurses doing? Do we have researchers, you know, working in the area of AI? And we can see, so these are some of the things I was able to gather. Uh, we have this boss, E and Ito. They worked on machine learning methods for identifying critical data elements in nursing documentation. Liz and others work on development of e telling nursing mobile manipulator for remote caregiving. And then we have Safari. Uh, ITO that worked on development and validation of a machine learning model to aid discharge processes, and then we have preventing inpatient. These are, in this team, we have nurses in the team. Uh, of course, no robot or virtual assistant can be developed without the input of a nurse, because you can be an engineer, you need a nurse to tell you this is what we do. And it is that information that will help you to know which data to feed and which programming language to use and which logic model to use and some other things that will make that virtual assistant you know, to be useful to the nurse. Now, the question is, will AI control the world? And I think I featured this question in my introduction. From what we see now, will AI control the world? I think the answer is yes, we are moving closer. We are moving there, even right in your pocket, AI is there. It's controlling you. Many of us now, you cannot do without your uh, cell phone because there are so many things that will pop up and pop up and it will be taking you from one place to the other. These are all products of artificial intelligence. What are the three priorities now in our generation? Um, in, in 2019, we had a group of AI nursing leaders think tank, it's a WHO group, uh, discussing about the usefulness of AI in nursing, uh, in nursing uh, practice and uh, the future for AI in nursing practice. And they came up with these three priorities for we nurses. The first priority is that nurses must understand the relationship between the data they collect and AI technologies they use. So which means that the data you collect is very, very important in AI technologies. So from today, if you are a clinician, you're a clinical nurse, whatever data you collect, know that it, it will still be useful in AI technologies when we are ripe for it in Nigeria. So make sure that you collect quality data and make sure that you keep your record adequately. And even for the researchers, sometimes ago um, I wanted to publish an article and uh, they told me I must publish data note first. And for you to publish data notes, you must put your data in repository. And I was scared. I said, this data I've not published from. Where can I put it in repository? But the editor said, you must put it in repository. And I had to go and put it there. <laughs> Believe me, I kept on checking. Hope nobody is downloading. <laughs> People are downloading. <laughs> they keep on downloading. 20 downloads, 30 downloads. I said, why are they downloading this data now? And it's now down on me that maybe the data is to be used for AI. Who knows? Now we are in the world of data. And that's why now we have data scientists now. And they are making huge sum of money. Data scientists are the ones helping us to get this data to be used for AI technologies. And number two priorities that this think tank group said is that nurses need to be meaningfully involved in all stages of AI from development to implementation. Young graduate nurses, are you interested in AI? The future is AI. You can decide to go to toe that line. I wish I got this lecture when I was about graduating from the university. But it's not too late. I can still go into AI because I want nothing to be better. So work with AI techni technicians, work with AI engineers to produce something for nurses in Nigeria that we can make use of that will help us in decision making. And the last one is there is substantial, untapped, and unexplored potential for nursing to contribute to the development of AI technologies for global health. It is untapped. It is untapped and it is unexplored. Nurses, we are no younger exploring. And we need to explore. We need to go there. It is possible you can do it. And I can do it. The fearless makes history. That is what I listened to on AI television sometimes ago. So you can go there. And peradventure you are a researcher and you feel that, uh, no, I want to change my direction. You can go into AI, um, AI research because that is where the world is going. We are there and we will not go back. The world is moving higher with, um, with AI. So what can you do? We are in the world of data science. Uh, when I got this uh, title to, to, to speak on, on the alumni platform of my university, I just typed there, do we have any of our, uh, any of our alumni who is into technology or whatever? Can you please chat with me privately? 
And in less than three minutes, a guy just sent me. I said, "My, I am there. I am there. I'm in here." I said, "How? Ah, what are What are you doing?" I said, "No." I said, "You know, I have an hospital in Lekki, and uh, what we use the organs of our patients, we interact with them from home, and we collect their data. And then when we get their data, we ask our patients to our nurses to go and visit them." At home, he said, you know that most people now don't want to come to the hospital. And there's something he told me. He said, Ma, my vision is robotic, robotic nursing. That is where I'm going to. And if I apply for a course, I'm going there. So which means that we have our young graduates, our nurses going into it. The following day, a lady called me from, uh, sent me from Lagos. I said, Ma, I am into data science. I said, wow, data science. Where do you work? Are you working as a clinician? I said, no, I'm not working as a clinician. I work with the data scientists, and um, there's even a program Proposal I'm about submitting now. We need to pilot this proposal in an hospital and things like that. So, which means that we have our products going into artificial intelligence. You can do it. It is not. If I say it's a good starting point for you, if you are interested in it. So, think AI. And when you think AI, don't only think of USA. Don't only think of Canada or think of UK. Think of Nigeria because the field is ripe in Nigeria. Artificial intelligence in nursing practice. Support the use of AI. If today we have robotic nurse assistants, make use of it, work with others also to use AI. What can you do also? <laughs> For I, the Lord your God, will hold, hold your right hand, saying to you, fear not, I will help you. God has always helped me. He has been my sucker since I started this nursing profession. And today I have no regrets that I have God as my backbone. But I'm not sure you are not interested in AI, whatever area you want to choose. God says, I will hold your right hand that you should fear not. He is able, more than able. He is able, more than able to accomplish what concerns you today. I could ever dream. Hey, say, boo, more than able to have what he wants. So that is the word for you today. God can make you what he wants you to be. So he's able. Hold on to him. In conclusion, artificial intelligence is revolutionizing the nursing field by enhancing decision making, patient welfare, and educational processes, while also alleviating administrative tasks, untimely leading to an improved healthcare experience. Thank you so much for your attention. I'm grateful. I believe if you are clapping, you can make it bigger, you can make it better. Thank you very much. Please, you may be seated. All right, inductees, you've heard. You've heard about Moxie, you've heard about Florence. It is our prayer that some of you would develop more robotic health assistance in the name of Jesus. Maybe you won't name yours Florence. Maybe it be a Nigerian name, say Ogedengbe, or something, you know, close to that. All right, very quickly, um, before I invite the registrar to present the inductees to the registrar of the Nursing and Midwifery Council of Nigeria, it is my privilege and honor to recognize Dr. Mrs. Kemi Olubo Kere, who is the HOD of Nursing Science in Obafemi Awolowo University. You're welcome, ma'am. Uh, Mommy, we can't see you. All right, you're welcome, ma'am. All right, lovely. Even though I didn't know what to respond with. I also have the privilege to recognize the presence of the Chief Medical Director of Bowen University Teaching Hospital, Professor A.D. Olao Lomru. You're welcome, sir. All right, ladies and gentlemen, I now have the privilege to invite the Registrar of Bowen University, Mr. Babatunde Adetono, the Assistant Senior Chaplain in Bowen University, to present the inductees to the Secretary General. Ladies and gentlemen, your registrar.
not collect October salary. <laughs> okay. Um, inductees, may I request that you stand and you remain standing. Please put on your caps properly. And uh, I want to plead that I don't allow Muggsy and Florence to take over your job. <laughs> Otherwise, in the next 25, 30 years, we won't need nurses again. Computers will just take over. Um, let me request the registrar to please come forward. If you are clapping, you better clap. Because the registrar is going to give you the personal charge. The registrar, sir. I think you can, you can sit down. I think you can sit down when you are taking the oath. Then. President Nigerian Baptist Conventional and Visitors to University, Dr. Reverend Israel Adelani Akenji, the Chancellor Reverend Yusuf Gwada, the Pro Chancellor and Chairman of Governing Council, the Aconins John Ola Toyosi Ayo, the Vice Chancellor Professor Jonathan Babalola, the Deputy Vice Chancellor Professor Oluwa Tosint, Atobatele, the Registrar, Mr. Baba Tunde Adetona, the Basa, Mr. Baba Tunde Kolaole, the Librarian, Mrs. Aderunke Otunla, the University Chapel, Reverend Dr. Gideon Akambi, the Provost College of Health Science, Dr. Oti Awatunde, Dean Faculty of Nursing Science, Senior Assistant Provost, Professor Deborah Esa, Director of Nursing Service, Minister of Health Ocean State, Gentlemen of the Press, Ladies and Gentlemen. I'm here to induct the inductees on behalf of the Registrar, Chief Executive Officer, Nursing and Military Council of Nigeria. I wish to appreciate the Almighty God for this gift of life and opportunity to conduct the induction ceremony for graduate of Faculty of Nursing Science, Boyne University, Ocean State. On behalf of the board, management and staff of the Nursing and Military Council of Nigeria, I wish to congratulate the inductees for successful completion of the Bachelor of Nursing Science degree program in this university and for passing the professional examination attempted 100 percent. This is a great achievement and the council is proud of you. <laughs> May I also express my felicitation with the university management, your lecturers, parents and guardians for their commitment, support and contribution academically, morally and financially toward victorious accomplishment of your education in this institution. I also wish to congratulate the administration of the Faculty of Nursing Sciences for nurturing and grooming you in character and learning. The essence of this occasion is to celebrate you are transitioning from being nursing student to graduate and register nurses. Therefore, today our gathering here is to formally receive you into the noble profession of nursing through the induction and oath-taking ceremony, which will be administered to you by myself. This occasion will also be utilized to remind you for your fundamental responsibility as nurses. This is only after the induction that your name will be entered into the register of the council, and you will henceforth be addressed as a nurse with the title register nurse are and after your name. Therefore, I crave you are indulgent 
to take every aspect of this ceremony very serious, as in this makes the beginning of your professional career as a nurse. A lot is being expected from every one of you as polyvalent graduate nurses. Great nurses. Nursing is a profession that is tremendously demanding and bullish in compassion and helpfulness, making that meaning that nurses are required to be compassionate, kind, and attentive in dealing with patients. The Bachelor of Nursing Science degree program, as you are aware, is a high standard educational program designed to produce nurses who are adequately equipped with the requisite knowledge, clinical skills, and professional intelligence to render safe and efficient healthcare to the populace. The BNSC degree program is both academic and professional in nature, designed to improve the quality of nursing services in Nigeria by empowering nurses to make sound nursing diagnosis, design appropriate nursing care plans, implement and evaluate nursing care holistically and comprehensively. Therefore, as fully balanced and graduate nurses, you have attained a high standard of education with clinical skills that will enable you to render safe and effective healthcare as you go into the labor market. Now, you will be fully accountable for your own decision, action, and attitude. As graduate nurses, you must be able to perform nursing skills in a variety of healthcare settings therapeutically assisting individuals, family, and community with diverse background, religion, culture, beliefs, social status, etc., and resolve their health issues. In doing this, you need to understand the social and physical factors involved in individual alleviation of suffering, promotion, maintenance, and restoration of health be able to function independently and collaboratively with, the, with other healthcare professionals in course of your practice in any healthcare setting. You should be able to develop, initiate strategies for health promotion, implement and evaluate such strategies for necessary outcomes. However, the truth remains that you will not be able to perform all this role immediately you started practicing as nurses. Therefore, I encourage you to be willing to learn from your colleagues already working in the clinical areas. Accept corrections, improve and make adjustments positively where necessary. Avoid unnecessary mistakes. May I also utilize these occasions to encourage you to explore available opportunities to acquire a higher degree in nursing as there are a lot of opportunities for nurses with such qualification in various departments, faculties of nursing, sciences, and clinical arenas. I wish to admonish you to be credible ambassadors, adhere to ethics of the nursing profession Display humility and honesty in the course of your practice at all times. For your guidance, I will encourage you to have some of these council publications. Harmonized Court of Ethics for Nursing in Nigeria, Rule and Regulation Guiding the Nursing and Medical Free Education and Practicing in Nigeria, and standard of nursing and medical free education and practice in Nigeria. All these documents are available. The Council published a research journal named Africa Journal of Nursing and Health Research, which has been contributing to the body of knowledge in nursing profession. You are therefore encouraged to engage in research and feel free to use this avenue to disseminate the finding of such studies. You will be given to your internship material after the induction ceremony. These materials include temporary licenses, 
induction certificate, logbook, and checklist. Once again, I congratulate and wish you great success in your future endeavors. Great nurses. Thank you for listening. So, inductees, are we ready for the taking the oath? Yeah. Those who are not ready, it's not necessary. You can just go aside and give us a place so that we induct the... Hmm? All right, now you can stand up. So please carefully, you should read after me when I read. You write us off your right hand, and then hold your induction paper with your left hand. Then please follow after I read. When I say I, everybody mention his name, you the inductee. You should mention your own name, not the dean faculty of nursing names, your own names, I. Then graduate of faculty of nursing science, Bowen University, Ocean State. It's not department of nursing science. Now it's faculty of nursing science. All right. I, I wait, 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 please. I say when I say I, you should say I, then mention your name, then stop there. Please, you should read after me. Hmm? I, I, a graduate of Faculty of Nursing Science, solemnly pledged to provide competent and quality care to the sick and well. Individuals, Individuals, regardless of race, regardless of race religion, religion, and status, and status. In, advance, in, advance. In, in diverse settings, setting. in, in full knowledge of the obligation, of the obligation. I, am I am undertaking, I will endeavor, I will endeavor. To, alleviate to alleviate suffering Promote health, prevent illness, and refrain from any action that is deleterious and mischievous or might endanger life. I will respect at all times the dignity of the patients. Families, families and communities, and communities under, my care. under my care, holding in confidence, holding in confidence all, personal all personal information entrusted to me. Entrusted to me. I, will I will maintain my professional knowledge, my professional knowledge and, skill and skill at the highest level, the highest level. And, collaborate and collaborate with all Members of, of health care team. Teams. I, will I will abide by the Nursing and Middle Free Council of Nigeria standard, standard of practice for nurses and midwives. And midwives. I, will I will be responsible and accountable, and accountable at, all times at all times for my nursing action, my nursing action and decisions. I will, do my I will do my utmost to abide by the code of ethics of nursing according to the Nursing and Midwifery Council, Council of Nigeria. And we uphold, uphold the, integrity the integrity of the professional nurse. The professional nurse. I make this promise, I make this promise freely, freely and open my honor. So help, me God. so help me God. Amen.
You don't sound excited. You are now official nurses. Come on. Thank you very much. You may please be seated. Inductees, please pay attention. Immediately after this program, the tallies you were given are to be returned. If you look at the face of the bosser very well, he will smile at what I'm about to say. If you misplace any of those tallies, you will pay the sum of 50,000 naira. Look at his face, look at his face. 50,000 naira, one tally. Two tallies is how much? See, nurses in AI. Thank you very much. All right, very quickly, we're going to take the citation of the nursing elders. Um, I trust the technical team is ready. May I please request that the first nursing elder, Dr. Oli Emisi, Luagwemi, please rise and remain standing. Thank you very much, ma'am. This is the citation of Dr. Olamide Uluyemesi Uluagbimi. Olamide was born a little over 60 years ago as the second child to the family of late Venerable Benjamin Olainka and Janet Oluaniola Akoshile in Ekiti State, Nigeria. She had her primary and secondary education in Akure, Ondo State, which she completed in 1977. She was privileged to make the first set of joint admissions and matriculation board exam in 1978 when she gained admission to the prestigious University of Ife, Ileife, to study nursing in the Department of Nursing Science. She passed her professional examinations and was registered as a general nurse and a midwife with the Nursing and Midwifery Council of Nigeria before her graduation in 1983. Her NYC year was spent in clinical practice in the military hospital Rukuba Jos between August 1983 and July 1984. Subsequently, she returned to the then Ondo state, her state of origin for employment. Between 1984 and 1986, she worked in the former Maria Azumta School of Midwifery Adoikiti as a nurse tutor. Shortly after the completion of her master degree program in September 2012, she got an opening to a higher level of service in the nursing profession as she was appointed as the first deputy director of nursing services in Ikiti State University Teaching Hospital, Ado Ikiti. This provided her the opportunity to develop nursing knowledge in the evolving teaching hospital and to restructure the nursing services department of the hospital. She introduced the use of standardized nursing language, NANDA, NIC, and NOC to nursing healthcare documentation in Exuth, Adoikiti, Nigeria. During her tenure as the head of nursing services department, several departments in the hospital enjoyed full accreditation of their programs by their governing councils, including the schools of nursing and midwifery, with increment in their admission quarters. These schools now have gone collegiate. Her tenure brought significant smiles in nurses' faces as many enjoyed promotions to higher positions after being stagnated for years. Nurses who qualified became assistant directors for the first time in the history of the hospital and before her retirement, three nurses had been promoted to the position of deputy directors. Her administration gave room for several nurses to pursue their degrees in nursing via online distance learning programs and through the National Open University of Nigeria, some to advanced and others advanced to higher degrees in nursing. By virtue of her position as the head of the nursing services department, Olamide had the privilege of attending several nursing conferences and trainings across the country and meeting several leaders in the nursing profession in Nigeria. She was also decorated with different professional awards in the course of her career. Notable among them was the award of meritorious service presented to her as the pioneer deputy director of nursing services of Ikiti State University Hospital Adoikiti by the hospital management on the 5th of April 2018 on the occasion of the hospital's 10th year anniversary. Recently, on 20th December 2022, she was again honoured with an award of recognition for her contributions to the Department of the Continuing Education Programme of the Nursing Services Department in Exuth as the gladiator of Florence Nightingale Virtues. Olamide was also divinely favoured 
to enjoy another career promotion in January 2019 to the position of Director, Nurse and Services. She served in this position till her retirement on 11th April 2021. In October 2021, through the efforts of her PhD supervisor, Professor Adeshola Ogufooka, Olamide was inducted into the prestigious Nurses Society Sigma Theta Tau International Honor Society of Nursing and registered as a member of the Alpha Alpha Epsilon Chapter of Afemi Awolowo University, Nigeria. She completed her PhD program this year in OAU Ilefe, Nigeria. Olamide is a family woman happily married to engineer Akin Lulu Uluagbimi. Their marriage is blessed with godly children and grandchildren. She is an active member of her local church and the Gideons International in Nigeria. Ladies and gentlemen, with a standing ovation, please welcome Dr. Olamide Uluyamasi Uluagbimi. Thank you very much for that, ladies and gentlemen. Very quickly, we'll take the citation of Mrs. Adenike Adeleye. May I request that she stands and remains standing. Thank you very much. This is the citation of Mrs. Adenike Uluatui Adeleye. Mrs. Adenike Uluatui Adeleye was born on the 6th of January 1958 in Lagos State into the family of Pa Edwin. Adebayo and Mrs. Raliat Omoshaliwa Adebayo of Ijeru Baptist Church, Ebutemeta, Lagos. She is married to Pastor E. Tayo Adedeji Adele with two children and grandchildren. Mrs. Adele loves cooking, farming, poultry keeping, and traveling. She attended Ijeru Baptist Primary School from where she proceeded to Ubumosho Girls High School, Ubumosho, for her secondary school education. She commenced her nursing career as a student nurse at the School of Nursing, University College Hospital, Ibadan, in 1977 and was registered as a general nurse in 1980 with the Nursing and Midwifery Council of Nigeria. She was awarded a Certificate of Honor Bronze Medal in 1980 by the School of Nursing. She worked briefly as a staff nurse at the then General Hospital, Ileife, after which she proceeded to the University of Ife, from where she obtained her Bachelor of Nursing Science Certificate in 1984. In addition, she was registered as a public health nurse and as a midwife with the Nursing and Midwifery Council of Nigeria in the same year. Adenike Adeleye had her one-year national youth service at the School of Nursing, University College Hospital, Ibadan, between 1984 and 1985, where she worked as a nurse and clinical instructor. She had a family plan and nurse training in 1985 at the University College Hospital Family Planning Unit and consequently was able to work with the Planned Parenthood Federation of Nigeria from 1986 to 1998 in various capacities as a fieldwork supervisor with the Lagos State Association and later transferred to the Oyo State Association where she worked as clinic officer in the Ebada branch and later as program officer and finally as a state manager for the state association. While working with the PPFN, Mrs. Adeleye obtained the Chevening's British Council Scholarship in 1995 to 1996 to attend the University of Exeter UK for her Master's in Family Planning Program Management. She registered as an adult nurse with the NMC in the UK in 1999 and worked with the City Hospital's Sunderland NHS Foundation Trust in the United Kingdom from 2000 to 2005 as a staff nurse at the Medical Admissions Unit and Senior Staff Nurse at the Care of the Elderly Ward. She was also a Unison Health and Safety Workplace Representative at the City Hospital's Sunderland NHS Foundation Trust between 2000 and 2005. In July 2015, she returned to Nigeria to contribute her quarter to the training of future nurses in Nigeria. She worked as a clinical instructor with undergraduate student nurses and physiotherapy students at the Department of Nursing of Afemi Awolowo University. She contributed to the writing of the Student Nurses Procedure Guide Volume 1, published in 2020 by the Department of Nursing, OAU, Ileife, Nigeria. 
she joined Bowen University Iwo as an associate lecturer in 2016 and later in 2020 worked as a full-time chief clinical instructor in the Department of Nursing. She was one of the foundation staff members in the department. As the chief clinical instructor, Adenike had the overall responsibility for clinical and practical nursing demonstrations for the undergraduate nursing students in the department. In 2017, she co-authored the writing of the Procedure Book for Students' Clinical Practice, Volume 1 for Bowen University. With her effort and experience, the appropriate training, supervision and mentoring of other clinical instructors were ensured. She was awarded a special recognition in 2020 in recognition of her contribution towards the training of the pioneer set of Bachelor of Nursing Science graduates of Bowen University, Iwo, Nigeria. In 2019, she was recruited as a trainer for community health workers in private health sectors in Oyo State. This is a USAID Sharps Plus project in Oyo State which focused on the safe delivery of unbiased client-centered rights-based family planning and longer reversible contraception, counseling and services for the people of Oyo State. Adenike Adelea retired from the nursing service as the chief clinical instructor at Bowen University, Iwo, Nigeria in January 2022. Ladies and gentlemen, with a stand innovation, please welcome Mrs. Adenike Uluatui Adeleye. Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. You may please be seated. Permit me to recognize the presence of one more person before I invite Professor Esson uh, to begin the, the award of prizes. Ladies and gentlemen, we have here with us today the Head of Nursing Services, Bowen University Teaching Hospital, Mrs. Christy Abimbola Alagbe. You're welcome, ma'am. All right, thank you very much. Please be seated. All right, one more person with us in our midst, the former PC of the nursing program, Reverend, hmm, Reverend Dr. Ndikom. I've already called in her this afternoon. <laughs> Dr. Ndikom is with us. Good afternoon. You're welcome, ma'am. Thank you very much. Mommy, I've prophesied into your life. From here, just go to seminary. <laughs> All right, ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Professor Esson as we begin the award of prizes. Thank you. The award categories are in three, but we'll start with um, award of recognition. Please permit me to invite the Deputy Vice Chancellor to present the award for our nursing leaders, nursing elders. Please, can we appreciate our Deputy Vice Chancellor as he comes up? Award of recognition in honor of our nursing elder, Dr. Olamide Oluwayemisi Oluwagbemi. Can we appreciate them? Let me also invite Mrs. Adenike Oluwatsoyi Adeleye. Thank you, sir. Permit me to invite our Vice Chancellor, Professor Babolola, to please join me here to present these two awards. First, to our guest lecturer, 
Professor Ajay Shola Ogun for welcome. If you have enjoyed the lecture, can we celebrate this icon? Can we celebrate her? Let me also call on our registrar, the representative of our registrar. This is her. One more. Yes, sir. Mr. Ali Muhammad Goniru. Goniri. Representing our, our registrar, Nursing and Council of Nigeria. Thank you, sir. We want to, uh, permit me to invite our chief medical director for the presentation of the next set of award, Professor Ola Oloru. So we go by the, he's going to be helping us present these three awards, Best Student in Final Year Research Projects, best student in leadership skill and the best behaved students so i go by um the for the best student in final year research projects the award goes to ademola kafayat anoluako ademola kafayat anoluako for best student in leadership skill the award also goes to Ademola Kafayat Anwoluapo. Please, can we celebrate her? Are the parents here? Yeah? Where are the parents? Ah. For the best behaved student, the award goes to Lawal Olajumoke Ololade, imbibing godliness and excellence. I expect you to clap, appreciate, and applaud her, please. Thank you, sir. Our chief medical director, you may have your seat. Thank you. Can we appreciate him? Please permit me to invite our registrar, Mr. Olutono, to present the next category of award. Mr. Babatunde Adetono. I want to be paid. Mr. Babatunde Adetono. Apologies, sir. <laughs> He will be presenting, helping us in the presentation of award for best students in clinical examinations, best students in medical surgical nursing, best students in mental psychiatry nursing, and best students in parent and child health nursing. The award of best students in parent and child health nursing goes to Ademola Kafayat Anoluapo. Please make it snappy. The best student 
in mental health psychiatry nursing goes to Olotu Adiola Aderin Sola. Olotu Adiola Aderin Sola. Where is she? Can we applaud her, please? Let's celebrate her. Best students in medical surgical nursing. Ademola Kafayat and Oluapo. Congratulations. Best students in medical surgical nursing, Ademola Kafayat and Oluapo. Best students in clinical examination, Anne Welka, Mary Rose, Omuwa. For best students in community and public health nursing, Abimbola. Doin Sola Stella. Abimbola Doin Sola Stella. Thank you so much, sir. Our registrar, you can have your seat. Please permit me to invite our provost to present the next category of award. The award of best students in preclinical nursing. Best students in preclinical nursing, Ademola Kafayat Anoluako. Please, can we celebrate her? Thank you, sir. Third best graduating student, <laughs> Fumi Layo Olubumi Taiwo. Can we celebrate the parents? Second best graduating student. Second best graduating student, Ade Moroti Roda Oluani Femi. Ade Moroti Roda Oluani Femi. You can thank you so much, our acting provost. This um, category of award, I have the privilege and honor to invite our Vice Chancellor, Professor Jonathan Babalola, to present this award. Can we celebrate our Vice Chancellor? <clears throat> the award of Best Graduating Student. Best overall best graduating student goes to Ademola Kafayat Anuoluapo. Can 
we celebrate this icon? Can we celebrate? Thank you very much, sir. Congratulations. I want to, at this junction, I want to invite the vice president of BAMS. BAMS is the Nursing Student Association for Bowen to present for some awards of recognition in honor of people who have served the Student Association. Hey, everyone. I want to specially appreciate the outgoing president of the Bowen Association of Nursing Students. And I'm presenting the Meritorious Service Award to our outgoing president in person of Anna Welkai, Mary Rose Omowa. Thank you very much. Congratulations to all the awardees. Very quickly, we're going to be taking the goodwill messages. Um, all speakers are to note that they each have one minute. If possible, 45 seconds. The Lord will help you in Jesus' name. Please join me as I welcome the Chief Medical Director of Bowen University Teaching Hospital, Professor A.D. Olao Loro. You're welcome, sir. Please put your hands together for him. I'd like the uh, chairman to uh, permit me to stand on established protocol. I uh, bring greetings from the management and staff of Bowen University Teaching Hospital of Bumosho, which has trained these ones for the last several years. Uh, I congratulate the management of the university <coughs> for another induction ceremony for our nurses, for our nursing graduates. I congratulate the leadership of the Faculty of Nursing Science, uh, the faculty members especially, who have brought these ones up from freshers to now graduate nurses after several years of tutoring. I'd like to say a few things to them, which is this, that you should not forget are uh, three entities in your life as long as you live. And this is Nigeria, first of all. You must never forget Nigeria. It is likely that most of you would flee because we have this epidemic of exodus right now. Uh, but wherever you go, you should never forget Nigeria. You must give back to this country. You must give back to Bowen University because this great university has made you what you have become whether as individuals or as members of the alumni, always remember Bowen University. Your parents are here in their numbers. You must remember them in their old age. You must never forget those. As you go, I wish you Godspeed. Thank you. Thank you very much, sir. Uh, next, I have the Director of Nursing Services, Ministry of Health, Ocean State. You're welcome, ma'am. Permit me to stand on the established protocol. My professional colleagues, how are you? Yeah, I'm happy to call you that. I just want to let you know a few things because of the time. I want you to be, prepa want you to be prepared to collaborate with all the health workers. You are not the only one that is in the health system. It's very, very important so that you'll be able to learn what you have not known. You know, there's nobody that knows all. Then be prepared to be accountable for whatsoever you are doing. In essence, this one is telling you that 
You should be able to know your limits and you should be able to know what you can do. The other one is that you should prepare to devote your professional energies to the total care of your patients. Total care, both spiritually, physically, everything. Because by the time they see you another time, they will remember you for good. I want you to know that today, you, your many years of hard work, dedication, and commitment is apparent, and your year of study has you know, come to a good end. I want to just want you to know that it's not when you jack back you can make it. There are lots of people that are making it in Nigeria. And I want you to know that the United Nations are taking a lot of nurses now. WHO are taking a lot of nurses. UNICEF are taking a lot of nurses. And when you work with these people, you can be posted to anywhere in the world. So please, don't let you... Uh, my friend is going, let me follow that, my friend. One of our... Like, our uh, the people that have talked earlier and have talked much about that. Know what you want. And the moment you know what you want, put it in the hand of the Lord, and the Lord will see you through. I wish you the best. Thank you. Thank you very much, ma'am. May I please invite the head of nursing services, Bowen University Teaching Hospital, Ogumosho. Please put your hands together for her. I say good afternoon to each and every one of us. Permit me to stand on the existing protocol as I acknowledge the Vice Chancellor and all the nursing leaders and elders on ground and also acknowledging the CMD, Bowen University Teaching Hospital of Bomosho. I welcome the inductees and I want to say a big congratulations to you. Congratulations to the institution. Congratulations to all the parents on ground. And I pray that every one of you will eat the fruit of your labor in Jesus' name. Greetings from all the clinicians at Bowen University Teaching Hospital of Bumosho. You have started a journey into the world. And you are coming into nursing, and this is a representation of a profound commitment to serving others. You should be ready to serve others with the spirit of empathy and compassion. You should be ready to serve your patients, to serve the community. The world outside there is waiting for you and looking up onto you to improve the health states of our community. As you go on, I want you to recognize that this is an incredible journey. And remember to take care of yourself also. Nothing, if I may tell you, can be demanding both physically and emotionally. Lean on your colleagues. Lean on others to take advice. Just as it has been said before, know your limits. Take good care of yourself and take good care of your spirit. As I round up, resources have been expended on you. As you go forward, plan, prepare, and determine to become resourceful. And never detach yourself from the source of life. As you go, the Lord will keep you well. And I'm believing that you are going to be a brightening star even in the field of nursing, and to the generation you are coming in, in Jesus' name. Thank you very much, Ma. May I please invite the chairman, N-A-N-N-M, Osho State. I'm sorry, I don't know what that is. That's why I didn't pronounce it in full. Nam. Okay, the chairman, Nam, Osho State. You're welcome, Ma. Please put your hands together for her. Good afternoon, and congratulations to my professional colleagues. I'm standing in for my vice chairman in person of Wahid Olaide Oyeyemi. He is another is taking uh, is having another occasion somewhere. 
So that's why I'm representing him. I'm the auditor one for the state. So this is a good win message brought from him. And he's welcoming you into this profession. Sir, the vice chancellor, permit me to stand on the existing protocol. It is my pleasure to felicitate with the management and students of the Citadel of Academic Excellence on this historic event, marking the fourth induction ceremony for the new graduate nurses. It is indeed a milestone in the annal of history. At their inductees, achieving a feat of this nature takes dedication, commitment, utmost steadfastness, I therefore congratulate you all for your success in the various examinations. On behalf of the entire nurses and midwives in Ocean State, I'm welcoming you all into the autistic profession of nursing and also into the association NAM, that is nursing, Nigeria nurses and midwives of this Nigeria. My dear colleagues, the association has always been in the forefront of championing many developmental goals for the profession. All the progresses nursing profession, profession has made so far, including the new enhanced entry points for the graduate nurses are product of NAM struggles. I therefore charge you all to join us in the struggle towards a continuous emancipation of the profession. Once again, I welcome you all into the profession and into the association. And I wish you well as you continue to advance your individual career in the profession. Accept my hearty congratulation. Great nurses, great nurses, the hands that care, carry unlimited. That is our new slogan. Thank you. I'm sure they'll familiarize themselves with that slogan before they leave this afternoon. Up next, the president, University Graduate of Nurse and Sciences Association. You have one minute, sir. One minute. One minute. Thank you very much. Yeah. <laughs> uh, thank you. Okay. Uh, thank you very much. Um, I will say, I will ask the VC to kindly uh, allow me to stand on assisting protocol because of our time. I'll be performing two roles, enlistment and also the giving of award to the deserving around among the inductees. But I will also specially thank some people for coming. Number one is a professor, Gunfo Wokon. Thanks, she has always been there for us. And uh, I also thank the representative of Northern Namibia Council of Nigeria, also the DNS of Ocean States, and uh, NAM representative. We thank you for coming. So, great nurses. Well, if you are just uh, entering nursing, I maybe I, I'm going to take that from you. But for somebody who has passed through the fire of nursing, he has gone far in nursing and ready to take the world by surprise. I expect more than that from you. Great, great, great nurses. So thank you very much. I am delighted on behalf of the National Executives of the Nigerian University of uh, Nigerian University Graduate of Nursing Science Association in once again to be invited to the fourth induction ceremony of the Faculty of Nursing Science of this great institution. This is indeed a milestone achievement for the newly graduated students of the, of the faculty. It is an honor that we do not take for granted. Our fraternity appreciation is to the leadership of the Department of Nursing Science, the entire student, the Senate, and the management of this great citadel of excellence and godliness. Dear colleagues, as I join in the procedural profession of nursing today, to continue the perpetuation of your self professional care to humanity are practiced by our dear mother, Florence Nightingale. I am deeply honored to be here for your enlistment into the University Graduate of Nursing Science Association, Gunsa. Gunsa, as the 
professional association of nurses with a minimum qualification of first degree in nursing ensure that the qualitative education you acquire in the university is translated into qualitative care for mankind by continuing to enlarge the scope of your clinical skill, research capabilities, and critical reasoning, as well as keeping you abreast with the later evidence-based strength than international best practices. Henceforth, you shall be part of our monthly peer review scientific session where live clinical scenarios are reported and practically reviewed for capacity building, clinical audit, and purpose of professionalism. In our annual national and professional conference and scientific audit, you shall also continually join the other graduate nurses across the length and breadth of the country to take the audit of our professional growth and development and share our collective aspiration for a better profession that is responsive to the dynamism of health and healthcare in order to consolidate and improve our on the role of nursing profession in providing frontline care. Please, or from your file, you are going to get your file is with us. You are going to get the full message. Let me just go to the concluding part. So may I, at this point, implore you to advance in your academic pursuit through the postgraduate studies in any area of your choice, utilizing the endless opportunities and specialties that nursing pre uh, profession present to excel in your nursing career. On this note, I hereby, on behalf of and in the name of Gunza, formally enlist you as Bovanafai Registered Member of the Association, as you live here for anywhere on head in pursuit of all of, of continuation of this associate career, we enjoy you to not only sing, but also live our slogan, make a positive change. Gunza, make a positive change. As our tradition entails, we surely give our war in three categories to people among you. Believe me, you are all winners, but we must still try to give some things to certain people among you. Where well, we will be giving on leadership, academics, and also in research. And in our research, we have an um, international journal called Nursing Scope. Apart from the uh, money we are also going to give here, if you publish your work with us, we are also going to only, we only do it, we do it freely for you and we also pay you again because of this award. And the first person I'm going to be called is in leadership. We cherish leadership and uh, we believe leaders, they are the future of the real tomorrow. And uh, for this research, and for this uh, leadership, I'm going to call on uh, Professor Ogufo Wokon to please join me in giving the award to the deserving one. And the first person in this category is uh, Nurse Ademola Kafayat Anoluapo. <laughs> and the second person in this category is also Nurse Anamioka Mary Rose. Ononoa. So for the Ononoa, we just got to know here uh, because of the award. So we are going to only give you a certificate to take picture and we are going to send your certificate to you. But we have your cash price here. Um, Nurse Kafayat, please, your attention is needed in front. Then in uh, academics, it's also Nurse Ademola Kafayat Anoluakbo. In leadership, 
it's also lost Kafaya and no Luapo and also in research. So to carry out the theory. So please I also call on you to kindly assist us. All right, as the presentation is ongoing, uh, may I ask the president of the Fellowship of Christian Nurses in the southwestern zone part of Nigeria to please come forward 45 seconds as mandated by the registrar. Thank you very much. I want to stand on the existing protocol. But I cannot but appreciate the nursing leaders and icons that are seated here today. Uh, to the inductees on behalf of the Fellowship of Christian Nurses, I have just three things to tell you, even as you embark on your professional journey. Uh, the first thing I want to tell you is this. One, seek knowledge. Seek knowledge. Don't stop seeking knowledge. The Bible says, a man of knowledge increases in strength. Secondly, have quality relationship. I say again, quality relationship. A man said, if I am great today, it means I have stood on the giant of soldiers. Maximize relationship. I say again, maximize relationship. And on a third note, have a quality time. Relationship with God. Don't leave your relationship with God as a chance. Develop quality relationship with God. Men who have, who have mounted great podiums in life, there are men that have had encounters with spirit. And when I mean spirit, whether evil spirit or the Holy Spirit, but I want to charge you today that you allow the spirit of the Lord to lead you. Uh, on behalf of the Fellowship of Christian Nurses, Southwest Stand Zone to the inductees, we say a big congratulations to you. Uh, but before I leave here, the motto of Bowen University says, excellence and godliness. And on this note, we are a fellowship that cherish excellence. We want to invite the best graduating students. Uh, your award will be incomplete today if we don't give you this. And the person of uh, Ademola Kafayat. We have two nurses Bible here. Uh, the first one will be going to the best graduating student, Ademola Kafayat. And the second one, We'll be going to the Fellowship of Christian Nurses, Bowen University, uh, University Iwo, the president uh, for the set. That is in the person of uh, Alabi Glory. You can come forward, please. I want to invite uh, Professor Deborah Esson as she helps us with this. Thank you. Please, you can step forward. All right, thank you very much. As punishment for going beyond one minute, the President, University Graduate of Nursing Association, will be detained for three market days until he buys his school a bus. In Jesus' name. All in support say aye. aye. Sherry, Sherry, have you seen? <laughs> All right, may I please invite Nurse Ademola Kafayat for the class valedictorian speech. Standing on the existing protocol, the Vice Chancellor, the Registrar of Nursing and Midwifery Council of Nigeria, all other principal officers of the university, the guest lecturer of today, the nursing elders, the dean of faculty of nursing, all professors and other members of faculty department, our parents and guidance, well wishers, members of press, Nursing class of 2023, Pilia Kara, ladies and gentlemen. It is of great honor and humility that I, Nurse Ademola Kafayat, deliver the valedictorian speech on behalf of the Nursing Science graduates of 2023, Pilia Kara, of our great institution, Bowen University. We give God the almighty, all sufficient glory for preserving us and making us to see this glorious day. Our hearts 
are filled with joy and gratitude that you all are here today to witness our official acceptance into the nursing profession. Our journey started six or five years, six, five or four years ago as neophytes with little or no knowledge of what lie ahead of us. Piliakara, I congratulate you all for your perseverance, dedication, consistency, and hard work over the years to reach this significant milestone. We all know what it means to be a nursing student, especially in Bowen University. The competing demands of study, assignment deadlines, hectic lecture hours, tensions of examinations, and so on. It has not been easy, but what, what matters most is that we triumphed and we are ready to embark on a journey that will impact countless lives. I would like to take a moment on behalf of the nursing class of 2023, Piliakara, to appreciate some people without whom we would not be here today the Vice Chancellor of this great institution, all other principal officer of the university and the teaching hospital, the provost, our dean, program coordinator, and our teachers both in the classrooms, laboratories, and beside the patient. Let me also put on record our gratitude to all administrative and technical staff of the university and others too numerous to mention. Your consistent efforts towards ensuring things we are in place and also ensuring we have quality education by teaching, mentoring, and inculcating the spirit of godliness and excellence has finally paid off. We are grateful to all our patients, both living and dead, for the opportunity to care for them as we rotate through different units and departments. Without them, we cannot learn, and they will not be today. To our wonderful parents and guardians who were part of this great feat, we say thank you. We pray that you all will reap the fruit of your labor in Jesus' name, and we will always make you proud. Permit me that we honor some of our parents who are going to be with the Lord during the course of our training here. Mr. Vice Chancellor, I crave your indulgence that we rise and observe a minute silence in honor of some of our parents and patients that are going to be with the Lord. May the Lord continue to comfort their family and make strength available to them. We can all sit. To our friends coming after us, it is God that did it for us. His work in our lives cannot be overemphasized. I encourage you to trust him and he will help you. Finally, in saying a big congratulations to Piliakara once more, I would like to remind you all that our degree completion is not really the end as much as the beginning. The battle just began. We must defend and protect the image of this great citadel. We must also defend the degree and license that has been awarded to us and aim for higher qualifications. I challenge each of you to make a difference in whatever you do. Get up and do great things in excellence and godliness manner. Together, let us make a lasting impact in the world of healthcare. Mr. Vice Chancellor, the journey had not been smooth. However, we are grateful to God. The gains outweighs the pain. The miracle of God has finally brought us joy. Pilia Kara. We came, we studied, we cared, and we conquered. Long live Bowen University. Long live nursing profession. Long live Nigeria. Thank you. Thank you very much. I will now invite um, representatives of the parents of the inductees for brief remarks, very brief remarks. Two people, one Dr. Mrs. Kemi Oluwo Kere and quickly following after, Reverend Dr. Olushola Idowo. Please put your hands together as they come forward. <laughs> Mommy, the time is taking you to get here. It's part of your one minute, ma. Sorry, I made you run. Emma Bin. All protocol duly observed, Mr. Vice Chancellor. On behalf of this great parent, we want to appreciate you. Please, can we just sing this simple song? Eshe goni eku itajuwa amore. Honestly, I want to appreciate Bowen University. They have not only built the academic capacity of our children, but they have also built them spiritually. That is what Baptist is known for. 
thank you so much. We appreciate you. We appreciate the management of the university, the head of the Department of Nursing Science, and Mama Nursing. Is Mama Nursing here? Professor Olaogun. Thank you so much for investing in the life of our children. I really appreciate this university. May God bless you. Thank you. Thank you very much, Ma. Reverend Dr. Olushola Idowu, you're welcome, sir. The Vice Chancellor, please permit me to stand on the existing protocol. Let me say that we must not rule out the God factor. Can we all shout a big hallelujah to the Lord? Some years back, somebody asked me, Pastor, where are you building your house? I told him I have one in my hometown. He said, what about one in Lagos? I said, well, I will give it a thought. He said, but you need to do something. I said, yes, I have one now in Iwo. I just started one in Iwo. Parents, you will agree with me that what it has taken us these five years is actually enough to buy a small plot of land and to build a house. So on Tuesday, I was at a meeting and I told a friend, the meeting was there at Kapionge. There, I told a friend, I said, by the grace of God, one of my houses is completed. I'll be doing the opening on Friday. We thank God for these wonderful children. And as many have prayed for us today, parents, we will live to reap this wonderful harvest and enjoy the harvest in the name of Jesus. As I also join my voices with others to say thank you, Bowen. We pray that the Lord will continue to take Bowen to greater height in Jesus' name. May I say to us, sir, that we must never, never allow the standard to come down. Let's keep going higher and higher in the name of Jesus. To the inductees, I'd like to say to you, please continue to project great in this great institution as you go out offering best of services to patients that will come your way. And I pray the Lord will use you more and more in the name of Jesus. Whether nationally or internationally, God will guide you in the name of Jesus. And to fellow parents, I'd like to say, please let us continue to patronize this great Saturday of learning. I'm proud to say that by the grace of God, in another three years, I'll be back here to see another daughter graduate. One one is in the other room there you'll be coming in by the grace of god next year he's in ss3 now Am I, have i become a marketer please let us go to be good marketers of these great institutions the lord bless us all in jesus name thank you very much sir for that i really like that you know let the living buildings shout hallelujah, hallelujah. sounds good all right, inductees, you shouted hallelujah. Please don't forget your tally. It's 50,000 naira. Immediately after, collect your tallies back from daddy and mommy and return them back. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. Please, if you've misplaced a beautiful silver plated biro, um, it's right here up front. You can come and get it. You now, ah, mommy is yours. Ah, what's in law? I'll now invite the university chaplain, Reverend Dr. Gideon Akombi, for a short exhortation and prayer for our newly inducted nurses. Please put your hands together as he comes forward. Praise the Lord. All right, I know that uh, we've been sitting for the past two hours or more now, and thank God we are coming to the end of this program. But uh, we cannot end this program without committing these uh, wonderful children into the hands of God as they go into our world to make a big difference. Uh, let me crystallize all that have been shared with us in lecture, in uh, goodwill messages, several other instructions. I just hope that uh, your heart is opened uh, right from when we started this program, we are picking one instructions or the other that will lead you to greater height. But let me uh, ask you that uh, you agree with me and join me as we ask the Lord to impart upon you 
particularly the spirit of love and compassion, which is uh, the main ingredient that you need as you go forth to begin to uh, practice your profession. Uh, in the Bible, Jesus challenged a man who put a question forward to Jesus, but who is my neighbor? You know, actually, uh, that question came uh, after the instruction Jesus gave that the greatest commandment is to love the Lord your God with all your uh, heart, with all your mind, and with all your strength, and to love your neighbor as yourself. So the man asked, who then is my neighbor? So Jesus went on to share a parable. He narrated a parable of a man that was coming from uh, Jerusalem to Jericho. And he fell into the hand of a man called uh, the robber or the thief. And the Bible says he was stripped naked and he was left half dead. To that man, a uh, robber, he saw that victim as a man to be exploited. So be careful and allow the love of God in your heart not to exploit your patients, not to exploit people that come your way, who in this context they are your neighbor. And of course, he talked about two other individuals, a priest and a Levite. They were so much in a hurry to go to the place of worship, not knowing that the actual worship is to save the life of that guy. So these two individuals, they saw the victim as a man to be avoided. A lot of times, if you are not careful, you will be tempted to avoid your patients. Maybe after, according to your own training and knowledge, you have concluded that they can't survive, they can't make it. I've seen somebody dying in the hospital, and she was hearing the doctor saying, that, you know, this one will die. You know, that enough is strong enough to kill the patient. So don't be like the Levite. Don't be like the uh, priest who avoided the patients. Even if it will take you to abandon the Bible study and prayer meeting, you are rushing to your church to take care of that woman, to take care of that man. And of course, Jesus came back and he talked about a nurse. We call him the Gold Samaritan. He came on the way of this man. He bent down. He picked him up. He first of all applied first aid, cleansed him up, you know, apply oil, took him to the hospital, paid the bill, came back and visited the man until the man was totally whole. So be that man as you practice your nursing profession. How will you be able to be that man? It is when the Lord impacts your heart with his love. And somebody will ask, what is love? I may not be able to give my own definition, but I will just read very quickly to you. First Corinthians chapter 13 uh, from verse 5. And that is what you are going to make as your own point of prayer. That God will impart your heart with these virtues. In verse 4, the Bible says, love is patient. Love is kind. It does not envy. It does not boast. Somebody just told you that be, be very careful and collaborate. Don't envy people in other professions. Uh, don't envy the medical doctor. Don't envy the MLS people. Just focus on your own and do the best you can. It does not boast. It is not proud. Love is not rude. Love is not self-seeking. Love is not easily angered. I have seen nurses getting angry, and they will spark their patient. Especially those who are about to give birth. Say, me, I'm going to say, I'm going to say, I'm going to say, I'm going to uh, it is not easily anger. Love does not keep record of wrong. Love does not delight in evil, but rejoices with the truth. Love always protects. Love always trusts. Love always hopes. Be hopeful with your patient. Encourage them that they will come out of that predicament. They will make it. Love always perseveres. Love never fails. But where there are prophecies, they will cease. Where there are tongues, they will be still. Where there is knowledge, it will pass away. For we know in part and we prophesy in part. And I love the place where the Bible says, these three things that we abide, but the greatest of it is love. So would you like to rise up with me? You've been sitting all along, especially our inductee, the, uh, the registered nurse or nurses of today. Would you like to rise up with me and believe the Lord to impart your heart with this spirit of love? Our parents and all other well-wishers, can we also 
uh, join them in prayer. If you would like to rise, that would be okay. Please pray passionately with them. Pray uh, sincerely with them. And ask God that through their hands, the healing power of God will flow. Through their hands, the compassion of Jesus will reach out to their patients. Can we please stretch forth our hands and begin to prophesy over them? Please let me hear your voices saying something out. Prophesy over them. You know the money you have invested, it is when they now begin to practice this thing and they are bringing changes, great changes to their patients that you'll be glad when you hear over the news that the nurse that saved the life of so 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 patient is your daughter, is your son. That is the reward, that is the joy. Can we ask the Lord that the love of God will be shared abroad in their heart, that they will handle this profession with love, with compassion. They will be the good Samaritans of our days. They will be the nurses, the kind that Jesus desires of our days. In the mighty name of Jesus. Can we ask that their eyes of understanding will be opened? That as they provide medical care, they will be able to provide spiritual care for their patients. Their hands, as they begin to touch their patients, they will receive healing. Can we pray, oh God, that they will not make error. They will not misapply medications. They will not, they will not prescribe wrongly. They will not carry out the instruction of the doctors or whoever wrongly. Can we ask that God will guide them? You know, this profession is guided by a lot of instructions. They have their ethics they must keep. Can we ask the Lord that when they are in between, they will hear the voice of the Lord saying to them behind, this is the way walking in. Can we ask that when they come to critical points that they need to decide for their patient, that they need to take a bold step in order for that patient to be recovered, can we ask that they will be guided? Can we ask that they will be led? In the name of Jesus Christ. I know that some of you are not this spiritually. And the last person I instruct and encourage you to be this spiritually. Your work is one of the professions in the world that require that you be deep spiritually. Because you are contending for the souls of men. And the devil, the thief, is also contending for the same. And God will be depending upon you. God will be relying on you to use your hand to bring healing. To use your hand to bring owners. That shall be as from today. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Amen. Father, we thank you because you have answered our prayer. To you be all the glory. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you very, very much. May I please invite the chairman of the induction committee for the vote of thanks. You have one minute, sir, and thereafter I will take the benediction. To God be the glory. Great things he has done. By God, we have leaped over the wall. I appreciate the Vice Chancellor and all the principal officers of the universities and Bowen University Teaching Hospital. Thank you very much for your support. We appreciate you, sir and ma'am. Thank you very much, our acting registrar, ably represented. Thank you for coming. Our North Elders. DNS, you appreciated, ma. So our guest lecturer, we really appreciate your lecture. And thank you very much for what you are doing for all the nurses lecturers in Bowen University. Let me say it, please, that she has really helped us in Bowen University, we lecturers. By God's grace, permit me my guy here, she supervised Dr. Latubi and she finished her PhD to time. When I was having problem with my, uh, you know, uh, my PhD supervisor, she adopted me, and by God's grace, any moment from now, I'll be done. <laughs> Mr. Dedeji also, she is supervising her PhD, his PhD. At any moment from now, it, it will be true. So thank you very much, ma. So our parents, you have labored over this one. I pray that you are going to eat the fruit of your labor in Jesus' name. And devil will not destroy your fruits in Jesus' name. Amen. So our inductees, you have heard, you have seen, you have taught godliness and excellence. And I pray as you are going, the Lord will order your steps in Jesus' name. Amen. You are going to be celebrated in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. And as we will be going, I pray that the Lord will guide us, lead us, and uphold us in Jesus' name. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. May I please invite the chaplain as we take the benediction and thereafter the anthems.
Can I ask us to please uh, be on our feet as we partake in the blessedness of our God? I ask that the grace, the mercy, the favor, the goodness, the power, the presence, the glory, and the life of God go with us as we move from here. May these godly virtues rest upon us anywhere we go. May the Lord establish us in righteousness. May the Lord be gracious to us. May he make his face to shine upon us and grant us peace now and forever. Amen. Amen. national anthem. Ladies and gentlemen, may I please request that we remain standing as the high table recesses in reverse order, led by the Miss Bearer, followed by the Vice Chancellor, the Registrar, the representative of the Registrar, the Nursing and Midwifery Council of Nigeria, followed by the Guest Lecturer, followed by the Deputy Vice Chancellor. The University Registrar, the University Barsa, the University Librarian, our nursing elders too will recess with them, the Senior Assistant Provost, the Dean Faculty of Nursing Sciences, and the Administrator of the College of Health Sciences. Inductees, please, you are to follow the college administrator. And as you go, remember to retrieve those tallies and return them to the appropriate places. Thank you very much. For parents that are still here, it is my delight to tell you that admissions are still on in Bowen University. If you have children who are supposed to get into the university, you can see myself or the university's admission officer just by my left hand side here and we'll give you all the information required for the admission process if your children are going to be going to the university next year you can make inquiries ahead of time and collect the appropriate contacts to do so thank you very much my name is Havila Adewale Samaliu 
I'm the university's public relations officer. As you go back to your destinations, we pray for journey mercies for you in the mighty name of Jesus.